to cannons at tens of thousands of demonstrators who took to the streets demanding electoral reforms. The crackdown on the activist of opposition-backed Borussia 2.0, a coalition of 62 NGOs, is seen by many observers as a blow to Prime Minister Najib Raza, who's worked hard to regain public trust in the ruling coalition, which lost five states in the 2008 general election. Will the government's heavy-handed approach infuriate the public and cost the ruling coalition crucial votes at the next general election? On July 9, 2011, the city of Kuala Lumpur was thrown into a state of chaos. Over 20,000 people took to the streets, calling for the reform of the electoral system in Malaysia. The rally was organized by Bursay 2.0, a coalition of 62 NGOs and political parties, headed by Ambiga Srinivasan, the former president of the Bar Council. In the months leading up to the rally, Bursay had been trying to persuade the Election Commission to bring into effect their eight demands for a free and fair elections, which included the cleaning up of the electoral roll, a readjustment of the postal vote, and the use of indelible ink, among others. Despite the non-partisan nature of its demands and its open call for all political coalition to participate in the rally, the ruling Barasan National Parties declined to engage with Bursay. Instead, it carried out a program of intimidation to try and scuttle the planned demonstrations. A month before the actual rally, they were already uh, rounding up people, confiscating uh, materials, T-shirts, uh, pamphlets that had to do with the July 9th uh, march. They arrested some 100 people simply because they were wearing the T-shirts. Uh, all kinds of racist statements were made uh, to dissuade uh, Malays from joining the march. Uh, as well as uh, also warning the Chinese is not to go out into the streets. There was also a real concern on the part of the government that the opposition was capitalizing on the momentum created by the rally to rejuvenate itself and garner public support ahead of the general election. What is our demand? Free elections. And they are so scared of a free elections. They can beat people up. I'm not in general so... Uh, this as uh, or rather saw the uh, Bursay rally as uh, as a means by which Anwar could sort of uh, you know uh, rehabilitate himself because he's been under a lot of uh, you know uh, political uh, pressure now and so on uh, and in a way you can say that the Pakatan riot was losing a bit of steam and the Parisan uh, national in, in, as a whole didn't want to see the opposition use the opportunity to galvanize support for themselves. Barusse had initially agreed to call off the march following the intervention of King Mizan Zainal Abidin in return for the use of a stadium. The government first accepted the deal, then reneged. Negotiations broke down when rally organizers wanted to use the Medica Stadium to stage the rally, a venue that holds much symbolic importance with the Malaysian public. Both parties basically dug in very early on. You know? So uh, from the very beginning, um, you could see that uh, they were very reluctant to compromise, to negotiate their positions. But the emotions and the sentiments had been built up. When the march finally took place in the streets of the capital on July 9th, it was met with a fierce security crackdown. Police cordoned off large parts of Kuala Lumpur and more than 1,700 arrests were made on the day itself. One man died during the rally due to breathing difficulties. Bringing the government's uncompromising response under both domestic and international scrutiny. Use very draconian tactics to stop uh, the rally. I think they could have done much better and the government's image would have actually been improved if they had allowed for a peaceful demonstration and you wouldn't have seen all these, uh, these scenes which look rather bad for Malaysia. I'm not sure. Um what will happen to their credibility at the end of the day, particularly the Prime Minister, because he's been shown to have mishandled the whole situation. He didn't make the right decision. He left it to the police uh, at the last minute. He uh, was uh, flip-flopping. So I think the personal uh, cost to uh, Prime Minister Najib's uh, Prime Ministership, that's, I think, is probably the heaviest. 
The growing criticism against the government over its response to Saturday's protest may have an impact on the Barisan Nasional's chances in Malaysia's next general election. It had been initially speculated that the 13th general election would be held by Prime Minister Najib Raza in 2011, a full two years before the end of his term, void by promising by-election results and improving economic conditions in Malaysia. However, after the Bursa 2.0 rally, that is unlikely to be the case. The credibility of the Najib administration has taken a hit. A lot of people are talking about uh, the way the government responded, the very heavy-handed response. It would pose a problem for him uh, if he cannot uh, uh, get a grip of, of the sentiments that have been riled by Bursa 2.0 and he proceeds to call for elections. The first Bursa rally, which was held in November 2007, was instrumental in the dismantling of Barisan Nasional's firm control on power when it lost its two-thirds majority in parliament for the first time in its 50-year history. That precipitated the resignation of then Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi and the succession of Najib Raza. And the challenges facing Mr Najib are anything but small. The partners, the parties, uh, they are not UMNO, but the MCA and the MIC, they have practically lost support okay, from the Chinese and the Indian voters. Um, so UMNO was actually banking on Malay support, Malay votes. And so if you have like about half of the Malay votes already going against it, you will only have probably half or the other half, mainly uh, rural Malay votes. But if you uh, consider the, the loss of support uh, by the Chinese parties and the Indian parties, then... What started out as a simple call by parties could compete fairly and transparently in the fight for their votes has taken an ugly turn. And while the winner of the upcoming election cannot yet be predicted, Barisan Nasional under the leadership of Prime Minister Najib Raza may have to do more to soothe public anger over the police action and rebuild the trust in the coalition as it struggles to find its footing in the new and changing political landscape of Malaysia. After the break, we examine the challenges facing Thailand's Prime Minister-elect Ying Lak Shinawat as she tries to mend the rift in a deeply polarized nation. Don't go away.